Well, hello and uh, welcome to another in a series of Cafe Insights. I'm Andrew Vine with the Insight Bureau, and today I'm in conversation with Martin Roll. Welcome. Thanks very much. We're here at the Fullerton Hotel this time, and Martin is an expert in the area of brand marketing and brand strategies, especially for Asia. So it's a great chance to have a conversation. So what is it that keeps you busy these days? I know you've always got a very busy schedule traveling around the world. I mean, I've always specialized in Asia, and, and my speciality is to help Asian firms to uh, move up the value chain. A lot of them want to build global brands, which is easier said than done. But lately, I've also been very uh, very busy in the Western world. I'm going to Los Angeles on, uh, on Sunday for two weeks for a start, doing things in Los Angeles, Atlanta, and further on to Jamaica for a one-day conference. So it is a mix of speaks and workshops, but also a lot of advisory, particularly for Asian companies. You wrote a book a few years ago about Asia brand strategies, with a view, I suppose, for international brands to really take advantage of Asia regions. Are international brands really being successful in Asia? I think it's getting better. I've always felt that like two tiers. There are companies that don't get it, but you see an increasing amount of firms that are getting, getting things right for Asia now, because what the Western firms in general have to learn were that Asia takes time, takes a lot of patience, and you need to bring resources. It's not going to happen overnight. Too many boardrooms have been sitting back in London, New York, decided we want to go to Asia. One or two years later, the guys come back from Asia, and it didn't work out. Asia is a long-term thing. The most important thing is to decide that you want to make Asia your home. So a lot of the brands that you have seen now doing very well in Asia are becoming very, very well established here. To start with, it was about bringing existing brands out to a new market. But as markets grow and you get a perhaps a, a tipping point where the Asia markets might start to lead. You can learn a lot from the Asian companies. I mean, I would say that the Asian firms are still far behind in general. I mean, you see the, the rise of the, the likes of the Samsung and the LG and the Hyundai are, are doing very well. I mean, there will be a point where Western businesses would, would learn from the region. A lot of innovation is now taking place in China. We think we do not think about China as an innovative place, but there are a lot of patents getting filed out of China, which could be a collaboration between P&G and local firms or GE having uh, research labs in China. So absolutely, Asia is not, an ex- is not only an export market for Western businesses. It is also your home. It could eventually become your headquarters. New products could actually be developed in the East to fulfill markets in the West. Absolutely. One of the uh, very well-established examples are the collaboration between Japanese Honda and the Indian distribution company called Hero, which was dissolved recently, but they ran very successfully for many, many years. You brought in an international brand like Honda, and you got access to distribution. What Hero Honda did were they actually produced a lot of locally sourced and designed motorbikes that was made for India, but because they worked so well in rural markets, they actually got re-exported out of the region to other emerging markets worldwide. So businesses can learn a lot from Asia. People are different, markets are different, things are moving at a different speed, people have different tastes, so Asia has a lot to offer. I know that uh, an important theme that you focused on in your advisory work is in terms of the really strategic importance of getting brand marketing right. I mean, the late uh, Professor Peter Drucker said there's essentially only two functions in a company, innovation and marketing. But it's probably fair to say if you look at Western firms, but in particular the Asian firms, marketing is normally just a line function. It's not fully ingrained in strategy. It rarely has access to the boardroom. It is a tactical thing where you allocate a budget and come back to me one year later, report what you did with the marketing money. It's too tactical. So marketing has to become strategy. That's easier said than done because you need to make sure it becomes ingrained throughout the entire culture, led by the CEO but carried out by everyone in the organization. Are there examples of companies that you think do it well? I think a lot of the Western firms know how to do that, but you increasingly see Samsung taking brand and marketing very, very seriously. When when Lee Kun Hee in 1997, after the Asian and the Korean financial crisis, decided to uh, move Samsung up and out of Korea, he realized that marketing had to take center stage. He hired probably one of the first chief marketing officers in Asia back in 98 or 99. And you see, you're starting to see the fruits of that. This is the theme that's going to uh, permeate through your new books coming out about the strategic role of, of marketing. Tell us a little bit more about those books that you're working on at the moment. Yeah, first of all, we're updating the, uh, the Asian Brand Strategy book. It came out in 2006, and uh, it's actually more relevant today because now it's the time for the Asian firms to really to do it. So that will be early next year, 2014. The second book is a collaborative book between uh, 25 of the leading marketing professors worldwide. We have all written one chapter each. It will be called uh, Next in Marketing. It will be published uh, by SARS Publications in uh, Q1 next year. 
And the two other books, one is going to be on the chief marketing officer, which is a, really a game-changing thing in modern corporations, but it's also very hard to carry out, which is you're going to bring marketing into the boardroom and making sure marketing does become strategy. The last time is a book that's tried to lead the effort between leadership and, and branding and marketing. How does marketing become leadership? Because marketing, as I said, is still way too tactical. And in order for that to be taken seriously at the highest level, it needs to make sure that you kind of ingrain it throughout the entire organization. And no people, I mean, no one has, has yet bridged those different functions together in a book. And that's what I'm trying to do. Well, that sounds great. Good it's luck great. with that. Thanks a lot. Thanks for spending a bit of time to uh, talk to me today. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you. Thank you.